Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hey guys, Nary here from Drakeling Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Echo Jenna's Path. So this will probably be the last episode for Jenna, um, judging by what some of you were saying in the comments. And I believe I shall probably also go to a, some one of the little uh, stories. Let me see, how do I get there? Boop, 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 boop. Uh, how do I get to the little stories? Hey, guys, if someone can tell me how to get to the stories, that'd be fantastic. What's this? Uh, Alright, guys, I have no idea how to get to the short stories. Um, if anyone in the comments can let me know, please do that. But anyway, let's jump right into the game, shall we? See just how much content we have left. Alright, All right, timer. Alright, alarm chain, you're up. Alright, let's go. <clears throat> I'm sure there are plenty of people, like the folks at my church, who'd be happy to donate to help get you on your feet. Take charity from strangers? Fun looks out towards the news vans outside. A particularly antsy-looking newswoman is currently getting chewed out by a police officer in SWAT gear. Though, it looks like the news lady is grilling him right back, shoving a microphone in his face. I think that's what I want to be one day. A guy with a camera chasing tragedies for profit. Maybe I should change my major. I glance back toward Flynn and Carl, the ram looking visibly crying, but no longer racked by quaking sobs. For some reason, I smile, if only for a moment. Or you could just marry the wealthy heir you helped save from abduction a couple hours ago. <clears throat> I'm sure that comes with some financial stability. TG immediately stops crying, blinking at me, then Flynn across the table. Flynn's eyes go wide before he quickly furrows his brow. Fuck you, Chase. Despite everything, if the lizard could blush, I have a feeling he'd be doing so right now. Ooh, I can't wait to see what that's about. Carl does seem to hug onto him a little tighter. Bells on the front door jingle as they're pushed open. Oh, is he talking about Carl? <laughs> the bells on the front door jingle as they're pushed open, and I can see Leo peeking and searching for us. Yeah, he's talking about Carl. <laughs> I thought it was someone else in the town, he saved. Once he spots our booth, he gestures in our direct direction toward the others, and they make their way over. I swear those fucking asshole useless pigs were going to keep me locked in there indefinitely until you vouch for me. Just because they can't do their fucking job, they gotta find someone to pin all this bullshit on. Why not the kid with the record? They're still trying to figure out exactly what happened. And they won't, because it ain't the sort of thing that can be figured, you know? Oh yes, I know that now. Jenna closes her eyes for a moment, though they open again as she startles, for, as she startles from Leo coming up behind her. He's about to speak when a particularly rotund alligator woman saunters up beside me. She's wearing a white polo shirt, jeans, and a blue pancake house apron. Why, hello there. You all got enough room in here in the booth? She smiles, seemingly unfazed by the sorry state we all look to be in. I suppose when you work at a 24-7 diner in the middle of the desert, you see some oddball customers. TJ blinks, then mutters an apology as he scoots himself over, close to Flynn. I do the same, and Jenna moves to sit beside me. Misha and Leo take the opposite side. We're in a long corner booth that actually has several mini tables, but with all of us together, we're shoulder to shoulder in here. We each tell the waitress what we want in no particular order. Misha practically blurts out what he wants. Two hash browns, six house style waffles, toast with strawberry jam, and a side of bacon. Meanwhile, I ask for a large iced tea with a bowl of vanilla ice cream. Well, that sounds good. Jenna insists I get something healthy in my stomach, so she offers to split her turkey sandwich. I smile at her and accept, relaxing against the pleather look pleather backing of the booth seats. Our server finally gets to Flynn and Carl, and both of them don't seem to be too focused on what she's saying. Flynn is staring at his phone, and Carl is leaning into him with a distant look in his eyes. TJ gingerly nudges the gila, and Flynn look quickly looks up at the alligator. Oh, the uh, banana split and garden house salad, please. Uh, two lemonades. Pink. What? A uh, pink lemonade. Flynn looks at Carl... Uh, like his last shred of masculinity can't possibly bear to utter those words aloud. Fortunately, the waitress writes down Carl's correction with that with that same unjudging smile. Pink lemonade is fucking awesome. What are you talking about? Two pink... Two pink lemonades! Ugh! Alright, if that's all, I'll be back with you folks in a bit. Carl lowers his noggin back into Flynn, while the gill goes back to staring at his phone.
I can't get a hold of my aunt. Mayor aunt? Yes, my aunt who's the mayor. Maybe she's tied up with the police, sorting stuff out. I offer reassuringly, picking up a sugar packet from the table and emptying it in my mouth like an absolute cretin. Yeah, but you'd think she'd call me back. Leo raises an eyebrow at me from across the table, taking a sugar packet for himself. Hey, uh, Otter, you should have heard Carl's dad falling over himself thanking Jenna over the phone. All the cops in there were calling her a hero, yeah? Oh, quiet you. Hey, I'm sure I could have been just as smooth if I was the one up for talking Heather down. I look at Misha, and I can't tell if he's being serious or not. Whatever you say, little buddy. The wolf downs his sugar packet, smirking some. He and I used to swipe these from the diner all the time. Creamers, too. He'd always go for the aspartame or stevia-based ones, though. I can see Jenna giving us a curious glance before focusing her attention on me. <clears throat> anyway, the police were pretty happy with you, too. It takes me a second to realize what she's referring to, and I quickly wave a dismissive paw. Heh, <laughs> well, I'm sure I just gave them more work. That is their job, Chase. TJ, who has been relatively silent next to me, looks increasingly perplexed, his ears folded downward. With everything going on, I realized I hadn't told the rest of the gang about my discovery. Uh, for those not present, I found an old corpse on the side of the road from like the 70s. This gets Carl, Flynn, and TJ's attention. I found it is putting it mildly. You picked a patch of dirt and started digging until you found the guy's body and wallet. What? I held up my paws, shaking my head. I can't explain it. I can't explain a lot of things. The fact the body is so old, though, means I'm not a suspect, at least. <laughs> a weirdly sour feeling courses through my body, and I instinctively squeeze my tail beneath the table. But they ran the guy's name through the system. His disappearance was so long ago, they don't even have a record of it anymore. They did find living family, though. That was a point of contact from what I heard. Jenna smiles. I'm sure whoever they are, they'll be grateful for what you did. After four decades? I'm not so sure. Maybe it will just dig up old wounds, raising more questions than answers. It's not like I told the police of my dream, about the van or anything, or who the original owner was. To think, Sidney's dad killed a guy. No wonder he ended up the way he did. There's a moment of silence, Misha staring impatiently at the kitchen and Flynn, dig and Flynn dialing up his aunt again. A Jenna exhales, breaking the quiet. Regardless, I'm just glad you're all okay. Misha's fingers and neck are healing up nicely, and you two are finally separated. Jenna nods towards Leo and I. There's no way in hell that phrasing wasn't intentional. She has this self-confident smile on her face, though. When neither of us respond, it diminishes. Leo just looks kind of distant. Not like before, of course, when he was all loopy and post-beatdown, but like he's got a lot on his mind he hasn't really processed yet. I know exactly how he feels. Dick! Mishi muses, idly tearing strips of his snapkin off. Huh? Dick? <laughs> that was a dick thing to say. Well, that's pretty rich coming from you. Misha's about to say something when Jenna cuts him off, speaking first. No. No, he's right. She brings her fingers to her temple for a moment, thinking, before focusing on Leo and I, making sure to meet our gaze. Acting like we're all still in high school, teasing you two about your relationship, it's not appropriate. And ultimately, it's driven by jealousy. Leo blinks. Uh, Jenna. It's not something I like to admit, but a lot of what I would do is driven by that. The need to experience things I wasn't afforded growing up. Misha looks up from his napkin of evisceration, the edges of his mouth curled into a soft frown. Flynn glances over as well. There's a decent amount of content left, I've just gotten through like eight minutes. A prank I orchestrated over three years ago led to this whole situation, picking out a raw nerve and leaving it to fester. The mind flashes the images of my smashed cell phone sitting on the pavement, Leo calling for me as I walk away. Do I think you two should be together? No. But is that any of my goddamn business? Also no. And for that, I apologize. Wow. Flynn speaks my mind. We should go through more tragedy f tragedies if it gets you to admit you're just as shitty as us for a change. Flynn grunts. Jenna waves off Flynn's comment. But seriously, Leo, don't hump Chase at a children's arcade and then destroy it when you get caught. He smashed up an arcade. I did. You know, I'm, uh, kind of a rebel. A real badass. Leo clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth, of his mouth letting a moment of silence pass as he glances offward. Nah, I'm a fucking idiot. 
Beard seems to be purposefully avoiding Jenna and I's gaze. Hey, people do worse things under the effects of the hum. Manifesting a topa of one's ex-boyfriend, it's a, a bit much, you know? Ex-boyfriend. I suppose that settles it, though I can feel how much it hurt him for him to say that. He smiles regardless, of course. Well, if the topa's given good hair, there's not much to complain about. Seriously, what the fuck are you guys talking about? I can't help but chuckle, and a few others do too, including Leo. Describe any of, describe any of this in any in any sort of way that does it justice seems utterly untenable. Look, I reckon what well, it's best if we put some time and a few beers in between this event and us before getting into the nitty gritty details. Yeah. Oh, planning another Echo meetup already? I asked, trying to sound more lighthearted than I feel. Fuck no, Otter. We've got the internet if we want to talk. My inbox is always open, though I think therapy may be the safer bet than beers. I could get you some harder stuff. Jenna sighs. Like? She seems to regret the question the moment she says it. You ever had a foot-tall devil dog cake with strawberry, cherry, and raspberry filling? I know a place off Santa Rita and, Bu and Busby and Pueblo. Would take your mind off anything. I can also get you some heroin. Misha, for God's sake! I'm just kidding, Christ. The cake place closed years ago. <laughs> oh, Misha. Oh, I like him. I really did I didn't really like him that much at first, but he really grew on me. We talked for a few more minutes, mainly mainly riffing on what the hell we're all going to do after all this. The food arrives before Jenna and I really get a chance to weigh in, though. And I'm complaining, of course. The vanilla ice cream looks delicious. And Jenna's sandwich she offered to split doesn't look too bad either. She sets it gingerly on my plate. Flynn glares at his pink lemonade as if it had just insulted him. Fucking hell! He glances over to Carl, who seems to be working up the energy to sit upright enough to eat his food. This looks like you're pissed after too many energy drinks. That was once. Carl speaks up in a sniffly voice. The lizard looks like he's about to take a tentative drink right when his, right when his phone goes off. He quickly snatches it up. Hello? Mark. He leans forward, resting his elbows on the tabletop. Yeah, hi. I left a message earlier. Have you heard anything from my aunt? He frowns suddenly. Uh, okay. Why? Alright. Alright. Lizard takes Carl by the shoulders and straightens him out. The blue-eyed ram blinking as some as Flynn tries to, tries to stand and scoot past him. I'll be right back. Flynn, after accidentally hip-bumping Misha in the, in the face half a dozen times, manages to exit the booth. He heads out to the parking lot. Ordinarily, I get the impression this would annoy the shit out of the bat, but he's too excited for his plate of food to complain. He dives into the bacon into the bacon first, shoving it all in his mouth as a whole wall. Wow, don't do that. Even Leo raises his eyebrows a bit. Don't choke. I think Misha mumbles an expletive at him. Angry guy is already moving on to his jail or toe. Sorry for the yawning, guys. I got up, like, not too long ago. The hungry guy is already moving on to his jam and toast by the time I bite into my sandwich. We eat in silence for the most part, though it's not exactly awkward. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, damn, that's some good coffee. Mmm. I think we're just mainly content to have each other's company after everything we've been through. I can't fathom being alone with my thoughts after all this. Though, in the quiet, I do get to thinking about that voice that spoke to me by the van. It seems like a distant memory now, but it was so clear. We've been together for some time. I'm with you. You are indecisive by nature. I choose. Those words stick out to me the most. Glancing around at my friends, I decide to try something. I let the ambient noise of the diner fade out, focusing on trying to remember that voice, the one I've heard before. I close my eyes, emptying my mind of worries and other thoughts. I wait. Uh-oh. Jenna nudges my shoulder, a french fry poking out of the corner of her mouth. You falling asleep on me, Chase? I refocus, managing to re managing a reassuring smile. Oh, no, I'm just uh, taking a moment. Oh. She nods, as if this made perfect sense. No clarification needed. You holding up all right, though? You know, I think I'm okay, actually. Really? Her tone is skeptical, though in a sort of jokey way. Yeah. Really. Hmm. She finishes the rest of her fries, wiping her paws off with a napkin before something catches her attention across the room. Oh, would you look at that? A jukebox! I follow her gaze, spotting it by the door to her to the bathroom. 
It's pretty retro. It even has those plastic neon-filled tubes that flash when it's turned on. You don't see many of those these days, or jukeboxes in general. I think maybe most folks saw them as more of a nuisance than a mood setter. Come on, let's take a look! Uh, okay. I'm not sure why this is so interesting to her. After scooting out, she offers me her shoulder, her tail swishing gently behind her. I offer her a little nod of thanks, using it to help myself stand. Leo looks up at me from his plate of chicken and waffles. We meet each other's gaze for a few seconds, and he smiles. All right, easy now. The EMTs already gave my leg a proper dressing after we got to the police station. Hell, they tried to get Leo and I to go with them to the hospital. Yet, of course, the last thing Leo wanted was for us to all get split up again. I actually agreed with him this time. Plus, I've heard horror stories about ambulance bills. Yeah, no fucking kidding. America's healthcare system is fucking stupid and crazy and all kinds of ridiculously, unnecessarily convoluted. I relinquish my leaning on Jenna and we walk. I hobble toward the jukebox. The music selection is pretty dated for the most part, though there's some modern dance hits thrown in there, surprisingly enough. They're scribbled on with permanent marker on sticky note labels. Jenna makes a show of inspecting the options, though. She speaks up toward me. Hey! Uh, hello? She lets out a little laugh, then sighs. Sorry, just, I haven't gotten a moment to speak alone with you for some time. Something on your mind? She nods. A lot, actually. There's a considerable amount of things we've seen, that we've experienced, that will never make plausible sense to anyone but us. Jenna gestures discreetly toward the rest of the group at the booth. I notice that Flynn is still not back. It does sort of put everything into perspective, I guess. Yeah. Part of me wonders whether I made the right decision. The musing... The musings come as a surprise. Jenna never one to really doubt her choices, or at least make such doubt known. What do you mean? Well, from what I figured from both your historical research and what Misha has said, this hysteria is cyclical. It always comes back and ends up hurting whoever's around it. Now, I don't know whether it gases, its gas is seeping through the ground, weird radio signals, or something in the water, and I'm not sure anyone ever will. But what Heather wanted to do, flooding the town, that would certainly put a stopper on anyone trying to live there again. I don't think anyone is going to be wanting to stick around there for a long time after this. Jenna's gaze shifts to the tile floor beneath our feet. Yeah. For a long time, she repeats. I try to think of what to say next. In the background, I can hear Misha saying something crude about the origins of syrup. I glance back and see Leo chuckling and TJ covering his face. Carl stares out the window. I don't know if you can really fight forces of nature. Whatever's going on, it feels much bigger than us. But what you can do is help people, I guess. And that counts for something. What you did for Heather, despite everything she did to you, that counts. Second chances and all that. Jenna smiles. Chase, that's very nice of you to say. Very sappy, of course, but still sweet. I'm not quite sure I can fully see it that way, at least not yet. Her tail thwacks me a little, and after a brief moment of nearly teetering over, I thwack back. I think we all turned out okay, noting the circumstances. Echoes this tiny town in the middle of nowhere, and the shitty situations brought us together in the end. And I don't regret that. Hmm. She taps her fingertips against the glass of the jukebox, looking elsewhere. I wonder what it would look what it would be like if Sydney were still here. The question catches me off guard. As far as I knew, Jenna never really liked the kid back in the day. Still, I guess he was part of our group. Hence the thought, maybe. I don't know. I don't really want to think about it, to be honest. Maybe he'd have helped Leo beat the shit out of Brian. I blink at her, the words sounding strange coming from her mouth. She looks at me, furrowing her brow. What? He was really into that wrestling stuff. I cross my arms over my chest. I guess. There's a long silence. I had a dream about him early on in the week. And once everything started, you know, hitting the proverbial fan, I remember hearing these strange voices. She doesn't elaborate on that specific thought further, shifting focus to me. I didn't make any I didn't make anything of them at the time, but noting everything that happened later she stops for a moment. If you want to talk to me about what happened sometime, just let me know, okay? I try to read her expression, the offer seemingly sincere. I don't see any sign of judgment or scrutinizing intent to her words. As usual around her, I found myself not quite sure what to say. Whatever happened to you claiming you're not a therapist? 
I'm not. I'm your friend. And I want it to stay that way for a long time. Despite my wariness at that original question, I can't help but feel a little fuzzy from that statement. So, just a friend, huh? Now it's Jenna's turn to be caught off guard, but the surprised look in her turquoise eyes lasts only a second. Hmm? Oh, perhaps you got the wrong impression this past week. I look at her and feel my heart starting to sink. I do mean, my mind was under the effects of a town-wide sweeping of hysteria, after all. I can't be held accountable for my actions. However, she sucks in her lip, staring at the ceiling as if in thought. If you wanted to take me on a proper date when we get back to Pueblo, I wouldn't be opposed. I feel myself slowly starting to grin, and I have to re quickly reshift my face into a less creepy expression. Uh, oh, okay, not opposed, huh? She lets out a humored exhale, shaking her head. To speak candidly, me teasing and flirting with you around Leo, that's not really me. Or at least, that's not how I want to be. I should be better than that. Otherwise, I'm no better than Flynn at the river, plucking at raw nerves. I'll admit, I was kind of worried that you were just doing all that to be competitive with Leo, like I was some kind of game. Jenna nods. Oh, that's completely true. What? I was, to at least to some extent. Hence the offer for something a little less biased. I look at her, a little gobsmacked. But at the same time, I can't help but feel appreciative of the honesty. I guess I'll, uh, consider your offer. She smiles, and for some reason she kind of reminds me of those old femme fatale, femme fatale types from old noir movies. In the meanwhile, I'm definitely going to start writing about our experiences here in Echo, specifically our most recent ones. How it augmented the perceptions of people, sometimes even in groups, it's almost downright paranormal. Almost. Nothing's actually paranormal. I'm certain there's actual inputs and variables which determine certain triggers that resulted in what we saw. On a personal note, I'm just happy none of the effects seemed to linger once we left the town. No Topa version of you hanging around Leo, no monster chasing TJ, no red figure following me, and no visions of Keith or for Misha or Heather. And you, well, how's that possession by the roadside ghost working out for you? I rub my head, feeling the welt from Brian's pistol, pistol whipping peeking out of my fur. I'm pretty sure he's gone. Huh. Who says you can't run away from your traumas then? She winks and I find myself smiling a little goofily. This is also insane, but I sure am glad she's here to talk me through it. Now, Chase Hunter, the true question. She turns to face the jukebox. What should we pick? Uh... uh how about, uh... Soft Rock. Oh, uh, you know what? I don't know. How about you choose? Oh. <laughs> Jenna's gonna choose anyway. Jenna gives me a quick nod. Whatever you say. Oh, here, this one looks good. She leans in and presses a button on the machine. And this is the song that was written for the game, I believe. Oh, man. Hmm. Guys, let's enjoy this. Thank you, wonderful Echo team, for another incredible experience. The end of Jenna's path wasn't as emotional as for Leo and Chase. Mm. Man, listen to that beat, guys. Love it. Oh, I certainly hope this isn't, uh... Yeah, I certainly hope this isn't copyrighted music. Oh, God, please don't be copyrighted music. Please don't be copyrighted music. Oh, man. 
God, they got a lot of music for this game. Sex. <laughs> Guys, this has been Jenna's Path. Thank you so much for this journey. I'm going to be probably... Uh, if anyone in the comments can tell me how to get to those little short stories, please please let me know. I would really like to... I would really like to know how to get to those. I'm planning on doing a couple of them. And then I'm probably going to jump right into the next person's path. So we've got TJ, Carl, and Flynn left. I'm very interested to see how those turn out. Oh, man. Oh. It's fucking crazy, man. Ah, uh, wow, what a journey. What a crazy journey. And we still have more of the Echo Universe to get through, too. I think we've got a couple more games. We've got, I think there's Arches, and there's the Smoke Room. Very much looking forward to those guys. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in every week for Jenna for Jenna's, uh, Jenna's Route. I, I really appreciate all the love and support you guys give. The channel is growing every day. Uh, the guys, I'm just going to wrap it up right here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And also, give me a super thanks if you want. A super thanks is like a tip, so you guys can like just directly tip me on videos now. But anyway, guys, thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Blah! I just did that. Ah! I'm tired. I'm still waking up. Forgive me. <laughs> anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!